Hello, in this video we're going to look at how we can correct some character created 3 poses using ZBrush and then turn that into a morph slider that we can later use for other characters or to take it into morph creator in iClone and use that in our animations to fix certain animations. Now Reillusion has a few tutorials of round trips from ZBrush into character creator. None of those tutorials explain or show you what I'm about to show you right now. As an example we're going to use this muscular uh, character and you can see that when his arms are uh, back like this and he's in a open A UB4 pose you can see that the triceps uh, he's, he's going inside the, the lat latissimus dorsi here and it, obviously this is not natural so we're going to try to create a slider uh, similar to this one where we going to try and correct that shape a little bit uh, this is not perfect this was a test that I was doing but uh, it's enough to see what we are going to try and achieve so it's a corrective pose so let's look at how we can do that and what kind of problems uh, you might face when you're trying to do this in ZBrush now, just before we do that since we're talking about corrective poses I want you make you aware of a free pack for Character Creator 3 uh, that is called Pose Corrective and you got all these corrections right here. You can find this pack and I'll leave a link in the description but you can find this pack in this link that I'll leave you for the forum Reillusion Center. You get all these free corrective morph sliders. Well you can see here the before and after uh, what it does. So some of these sliders are just going to correct areas of the, the character uh, for certain poses. So I'll leave a link in the description uh, for this pack and it's quite helpful but of course uh, you might want to do your own corrective shapes and for the lats I didn't find anything for these muscular characters and that's what you're going to do here. Of course this can be applied for any part of the body. Uh, let's, let's get right to it and see what happens. For example, if I select this character and I go Z on this character and I say, let's say, use current pose so that I can fix that pose and I say go Z. Now I have my character in go Z, uh, in ZBrush and let's say I want to uh, fix uh, some of, uh, fix this area here and of course if I control shift, if I just look at my polygroups you can see that it's all separate by polygroups which means that I can control shift and select just the arm and start uh, changing the arm. So let me go into my move tool here. I could start changing the arm here and then I can select just the body and change a little bit of the lot here and do what not. I'm just doing this so that you can see what's gonna what is about to happen. So let's say I did this and I'm very happy with the result. Obviously I'm not. Uh, and I go Z again. So once I press go Z and I update, what happens is I get this result. So if I go into my pose and I press edit pose, notice that the skeleton is still in the previous pose and the arms are now inside the, the character. Uh, this is because I used current pose and I brought it back in. So this is the problem and we're gonna look at the solution. One solution would be to just do this, send to ZBrush and untick use current pose. So if I do that and I come here, I can now sculpt in here, no problem right and then go Z and this will come back to character creator with those uh, changes and it's not gonna uh, change the position of my arms there you go there's the changes well of course the problem with this is that I can't really be sculpting uh, this area without knowing how the arm uh, position is in, in how it is influencing the latissimus dorsi. So uh, this is what I had to show you this so that you know what I'm about to, to talk about. I'm going to show you a solution to so that you can sculpt in the in the pose and then bring it back into character creator uh, without having that issue where um, the pose is all messed up. Okay so let's do this by steps. Now the step one uh, first, obviously, I have to select my character so that I can send it to ZBrush. And step one is sending it to ZBrush using the current pose, the pose you want to be working on. 
So I'm going to do that, use current pose, and to ZBrush. Once I'm in ZBrush, I might want to divide up my model so that it's easier to be sculpting on this. Okay, so I won't lose my division subdivision levels, don't worry about that. So I got my, my model subdivided, and now the first thing I, I got to do uh, after subdividing my model, and that's if I want to subdivide my model, is I go into layers. I go into layers and I press this button here to record a new layer. Okay, now I'm in record mode. Now I can start sculpting. I can start making my arrangements and start sculpting on them. Now just a few things inside of ZBrush, uh, as you know, Control shift because this is different polygroups. If I press Control shift I can isolate the body or the arm or whatnot and sculpt on that. But you can also, if you don't know this, go into brush and you go into auto masking and you got these mask by polygroups, which means if I start sculpting on this or moving this, uh, I'm just going to move the polygroup where I clicked on. And I got that down here, uh, mask by polygroups on my interface. So as, as you can see, I'm not affecting the other polygroup just one polygroup and that's really handy on this kind of workflow of course this can create some issues here but you can always smooth these out now being in a higher subdivision uh, allows me to make smaller changes and when I smooth and I believe I have a, a smaller smooth intensity right here so that I, I don't do too much smoothing do your correction whatever Okay, I'm, I'm just going to leave it like that because I don't want to be sculpting here for too long. So I'm going to just do that. And once you've finished with your sculpting, you want to come here to your recording layer. You want to click on the record so that you stop recording. And you want to bring it down to zero. Okay. Once it's at zero, what you do is you go back into Character Creator. And this time around, I'm going to send to ZBrush. And I'm going to remove use current pose and I want to make sure that I choose relink okay now if you happen to forget this and this happens a lot with me uh, I'm gonna show you right now what you can do if you choose relink it's just gonna relink it and it's awesome but if you don't and you make a mistake of not choosing relink what's gonna happen is that now you have what you were doing and you have a new one Okay, it created the new one. So if that happens to you, uh, you what you can do is you go to this one that you just brought back from Character Creator, and you come here to Insert, and you insert the one that you were doing changes to, right? This is the one. So now what I want to do is grab the one that just came from Character Creator, and if I go into Rename and I copy this, by doing a control C to copy it and I'll do an escape and I'll delete this guy now I'll rename my my one and I'll paste that name okay and notice that it brought back my subdivisions and it brought back my slider and now I can go back into character creator and do the same thing this time Obviously, I won't make that mistake and I'll choose Reeling. Okay, now we got this. We still got our layer. We still got our subdivisions. Okay, and all we have to do now is add our, push our layer to a value of one. And we can even keep sculpting this. Now that we see that this part was inside the triceps there, we can just. Uh, mesh have that oh okay of course I have to press record every time I want to change something in my layer obviously and I can smooth these out a little bit make sure that's not going inside and now that this is like this I can now go Z go Z there this might happen but don't worry I'll show you how to fix that in a second go back into character creator press update once that update is done here are the changes that we had without losing uh, I can show you if I go into edit pose without losing the skeleton placement which is the the, the problem that we had before now if I want to make this into a slider first thing you want to do is go into object nude character in T pose I'm going to export an object with a nude character in T pose and I can leave the settings as they are 
press export and I'll just save the file somewhere in my disk save yeah and now I can control Z to undo uh, the change that I brought from ZBrush and now it's the time to go into morph slider give it a name choose a category choose a subcategory which is going to be this one post corrective uh, I'll choose current morph to be in my target it's going to be a file so I'll select that file that I just saved press open and I'll say okay I'm not going to adjust bones or anything like that it's just a muscle uh, transformation there so this is going to create a new slider inside of post corrective because that's where I told it to be and it should be around here somewhere and there's my lot too so if I press my favorites it's going to go into my favorites and now you have a correction slider that it's awful here uh, but you can spend more time with it and make something that looks a bit better like this one that I had here now you may think be, be saying well that's all nice and, jo and jolly but how do I do uh, the animation in iClone well if you know how to use morph creator it's very simple you create a new morph using the file that you just exported and then you'll get a slider like this inside of Morph Creator that you can animate one, every time the, the character goes into that pose. You can use that Morph slider inside of iClone to animate it. If you need more information about Morph Creator, you can see the Reillusion videos. And they show you exactly how to use it. And that's it, guys. I, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you on the next one.